Hello everybody and welcome, this is Spoonie with another shipbuilding tutorial for Starbase. In this video I'm going to show you how to build a compass. This compass will point you towards the origin gate, regardless of where you are, as long as you're within the thousand kilometers. As you can see, when I'm below it, the arrow will point up. If I move to the right, an arrow will appear to point left. Or right. And when I'm facing it directly, there will be nothing on the screen. This works even if I roll. It will change the direction based on the orientation of the ship. This can be extremely useful for when you're out further than 500 kilometers and can no longer see the transponders of the origin stations. It can be easy to get turned around, and this will let you know which direction you need to be heading. If the plus in the center of the screen turns to a minus, you know that you're facing away from the origin gate. When it changes back to a plus, you know you're facing it. And again, if there's no arrows on the screen, it means you're pointed nearly directly at it. So in order for this to function, you're going to need to build this in front of you. It's just a square of beams with a few ducts. Uh, it's got six hard points and six small navigation receivers. So I'll show you how to build that now. So deconstructed, this is what it looks like. Uh, it's mainly comprised of 96 centimeter beams, 72 centimeter beams, and a few 24 centimeter beams. You're also going to need uh, the 24 by 24 duct intersection. You'll need two of those, and you'll also need two uh, 24 centimeter beam corners. You're going to need eight uh, duct corner, the 15 by 15 centimeter version. So you will need six small navigation receivers and six large hard points. For this build, I did include small turret turntables on my build, but you don't necessarily have to use them. These will just go down one on top of the other and should snap right into place. So to build the frame, we're going to start by going into our asset browser and we're going to select a 96 centimeter beam from the straight beam folder. We're then going to connect a 72 centimeter beam. And we're just going to hold shift and drag the arrow to copy this. You can also hold shift and click to select multiple things at once. Next, we'll select another 96 centimeter beam and place it facing upwards. And then a 24 centimeter beam on top of that. We're going to do the same thing and hold shift and drag the arrow to copy it over and then we'll drag that top beam down on top to create a square. Then we'll select the two vertical struts, rotate them, and place them on the bottom. We'll then do the same thing by holding shift and dragging the arrow up to copy them to the top. And then we'll drag those two horizontal beams we made in the beginning over to the front. Next, we'll select only the 96 centimeter beams from our vertical struts, and we'll drag those to the front as well. Next, we'll need to go to the corner beams folder and select the 24 centimeter corner beam. And you'll need two of these on the front in place of the 24 centimeter beams that we used on the back. We'll place one of these in the top left and then another one on the bottom right. And next we'll move on to placing the ducts. So we'll start by placing a 24 by 24 centimeter duct intersection on those two corner beams that we placed last. And this is what will allow us to power 
these six navigation receivers. Next, let's select one of our navigation receivers. We're just going to copy and paste it. And then we're going to place one on each side. And they should just fit snugly into each one of these squares. So to finish the duct, select our 15 by 15 duct corner. And sometimes getting these to snap into place can be a little tricky. And then we're just going to hold shift and drag to copy this over to the other side. Then we'll select them both and drag them to the top. And then we're going to copy all four to the front of the box as well. Make sure you get these lined up so that they're not blocking this beam. Once those are in place, we're going to move our final navigation receiver onto the front. And then our box is complete. Make sure you bolt everything together. Now to connect this to your ship, you're just going to use beams and connect them to the exposed section of beams on this box. The important thing is that you know which direction is the front and which direction is the top. Again, the front should be the section that has the two blue ducts exposed. And next we'll start naming our navigation receivers. So when you select a navigation receiver, you'll notice that there's two sections at the top. You want to ensure that you've clicked over to the second section that starts with message and is followed by signal strength. So when naming these, we're gonna start with listen angle and target message. We're gonna change the listen angle name value field to just LA and target message to just TM. And we're gonna do this for all six navigation receivers. Next, we're going to go back to our first navigation receiver on the front. And remember, you can know which one is the front based on which side has these blue ducts exposed. So on the front navigation receiver, we're going to change the name value field from signal strength to FR. On the back, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to name it BA. For the top, we'll name this one TO, and for the bottom, we'll do the same thing, but we'll name this one BO. So for the final two navigation receivers on the left and right, you'll want to make sure that when you're facing this box head on, that the navigation receiver to your left is named R and the navigation receiver to your right is named L. And those are all the name value fields we'll need to change. And now we're ready to install this on our ship. And remember to just make sure that the navigation receiver that's named TO is on top, and the navigation receiver that's named FR is facing the front of your ship. So to wire this up, you just need to make sure that cables are connected to one of these exposed ducts. Next, we can enter test mode and just ensure that everything is connected to the network by using our universal tool and making sure that we can see the network on the right panel. And other than YOLAL, the last step you'll need to take is placing down a text panel and changing panel value to just the letter O. And finally, you'll need a YOLAL chip. You can use even a basic YOLAL chip for this. Make sure that it's connected to the network. And normally, where I would go over the YOLAL in detail, 
for this video because it's already over 10 minutes and I'd like to keep this fairly short. Um, I'll just show you the YOLAL and I'll place it and pin it in the comments so that you can copy and paste it. If anyone is interested, uh, let me know in the comments and I will make a video going over this YOLAL in detail. Other than that, the X value on the first line of YOLAL represents the error tolerance for being directly facing the origin gate. Uh, if you decrease this value from its default of 0.5, you'll have to be more exact. Uh, if you increase it, uh, the tolerance is increased so you don't have to be facing it directly for you to have no arrows showing up on your compass. If you do change this value, just make sure that you change go to 2 to go to 1 on the 6th line. 